Anyone who's heard Kiki Wyatt sing can testify to just how anointed her voice truly is. Her personal life, though, it seems, has hit more low notes than high ones. American R&B singer, songwriter, actress, and television personality, Kitara Siobhan Wyatt, better known as Kiki Wyatt, was born in Indianapolis, Indiana, and raised, as she says, all over the state of Kentucky. She grew up in a multiracial, musically inclined family, which included a white mother, a black and Native American father, and four brothers. They spent a lot of time and was heavily devoted to their apostolic Pentecostal church. Kiki never knew a life without music and began singing at the tender age of two. Even though she was raised in a very religious household, Kiki was still able to get some exposure to secular music. She would officially become a professional singer after recording her first song at the age of 10. By her early teens, Kiki's bank account would blow up from getting paid $1,000 to $1,500 per demo she'd record. She would fly out to LA, do anywhere up to 10 demos in one week, and come home with money to burn. Unfortunately, at this time, Kiki would also experience major disappointment as a music industry professional. She wrote the majority of the lyrics for a song that went on to become a huge hit, but didn't receive any credit for her work. A fun fact about Kiki many people may not know is that she was a member of her high school's varsity wrestling team. At the age of 16, Kiki recorded My First Love with R&B singer Avant. The song, which is a remake of the 1983 ballad by R&B duo Renee and Angela, was released two years later, eventually becoming a single for Avant's album, My Thoughts. Kiki gained a lot of notoriety for the song, which became a smash hit, placing in the top 40 on the Hot 100 and top 10 on the R&B chart. A record deal with MCA soon followed. Kiki's first solo single, Used to Love, created a buzz, but didn't get any attention on the radio. However, its follow-up, Nothing in This World, another duet with Avant, did very well. Just like My First Love, the track charted in the top 40 on the Hot 100 and top 10 on the R&B chart. Kiki's debut album titled Soul Sista would drop in November 2001. Fast forward three years later, Kiki would leave MCA for Cash Money Records. Moving to a new label, though, wouldn't give her the results she was looking for. What would have been her second album and first on her new label, Emotional Roller Coaster, ended up living up to its name. A couple of release dates were announced, but ultimately the label decided to shelve the project. By 2006, Kiki would be released from her contract with Cash Money, citing conflict with management as the reason for her departure. The following year, Kiki began work on her next project, titled Ghetto Rose. The title track was released to radio towards the end of that year, but once again, she would experience another album being shelved. After setting a release date, having that postponed, and then the label filing for bankruptcy. Kiki finally caught a break in 2010 when her official second album, titled Who Knew, was released. Possibly making up for lost time, Kiki came right back the next year with her third album, Unbelievable. Only one single was released, a duet with R&B singer Ruben Studdard called Saturday Love. Reality TV came knocking as Kiki joined the cast of TV One's R&B Divas in 2012. After the initial season, she also appeared in the two following seasons, when the show was renamed to R&B Divas Atlanta. Kiki and Avant came together again in 2013 and released their hit, You and I. It rose all the way to number one on the Urban Adult Contemporary chart and remained there for close to two months. Over the next four years, Kiki released a steady flow of projects with her first EP titled Kiki, followed by two studio albums in 2016 and 2017. While in the midst of all the trials and tribulations she was experiencing in her career, Kiki unfortunately couldn't count on her personal life to provide much respite, since it was also filled with a whole lot of drama. When she was 18 years old, Kiki married her road manager, Ramit Morton, who was eight years her senior. Kiki was initially drawn to him because he was older, in the church, and appeared to have his life in order. But little did she know, he had some serious personal demons he was battling. She would later claim that he was an alcoholic, drug abuser, and physically abusive. In fact, a domestic violence situation between them would start being talked about publicly in 2001. 
Radio personality Wendy Williams would even bring it up in an interview with Kiki several years later, but Kiki flat out denied everything. Wendy wasn't buying it, and as soon as Kiki left the studio, Wendy let her listeners know that she didn't believe a word that Kiki said, and that she figured something did go down, but the couple were going to keep it quiet because they were still together. And she was right. Eventually, Kiki would admit that as a result of her husband choking her in their kitchen over the sink, she did stab him in self-defense. Kiki ended up being indicted on one count of second-degree assault for the incident that took place on Christmas Day after police pressed charges. Kiki's husband did not. A judge eventually dismissed the case. Being the good Christian girl that she was raised to be, Kiki continued the relationship for many more years and had more children. She ultimately filed for divorce in 2009 and relocated her family from Kentucky to Atlanta. Kiki and Ramit would end up having three children together. Kiki was actually pregnant with their fourth child at the end of the marriage, but suffered a stillbirth. She went on to become a leading advocate for women who have suffered domestic abuse and is a spokesperson for the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, as well as a celebrity supporter and activist with the Saving Our Daughters organization. Kiki quickly remarried in 2010 to ordained minister Michael Jamar Ford. When telling the story of them meeting in a club, Kiki speaks fondly of him captivating her attention with his booty-popping dance. By 2015, Kiki was raising seven children with Michael, three from her first marriage, Michael's daughter from a previous relationship, and their three children together. Reality TV came calling again, and the couple ended up on Marriage Boot Camp, Reality Stars Season 6. Two years later, Kiki was once again pregnant, but this time, she would also be facing a divorce. In September 2017, she took to social media in tears to reveal that not only was Michael the one requesting to end their union, but doing it at such a vulnerable time, with her being near the end of a pregnancy and dealing with a sick child in the hospital. She also claimed that his reasons were due to her being an emotional wreck and not trusting her. Later, Kiki would also claim that another reason for the breakdown of the relationship was that Michael had allegedly cheated on her with former American Idol contestant Paris Bennett. The relationship was apparently confirmed after Paris posted Michael on Instagram as her choice for Man Crush Monday in the summer of 2018. The post wasn't met with too many positive comments, so Michael felt compelled to release a statement of his own, explaining that he and Kiki were legally divorced by that point, and that no cheating by either party had ever taken place in their relationship. One year later, in October 2018, Kiki married for the third time to her childhood ex-boyfriend, Zachariah Daring. She sat down with celebrity and entertainment blog Freddie O to talk about her newfound happiness and she also didn't hold back about her feelings for her ex-husband Michael, who she says was toxic and full of himself. Baby number 10 with Zachariah would arrive in January 2020. Even though Kiki was on cloud nine with her growing family, issues from her past still continued to arise. In March, Michael made a post on Instagram to wish his daughter that he shares with Kiki a happy birthday, even though he hadn't seen her in a year and a half. He claimed that the child, along with his other children, were being held from him illegally, and he was looking forward to getting his day in court. In January 2021, Kiki made headlines again, but this time it wasn't about music, a man, or a baby. During an online video forum with entertainment website The Neighborhood Talk, she got in a very heated back and forth with Love & Hip Hop star Milan Christopher while discussing racial animus. Kiki laid into Milan for being allegedly too pro-black and not taking into consideration those who are the offspring of mixed couplings who also experience similar torment. Two weeks later, she apologized and tried to clean everything up by appearing on Fox Soul's Cocktails with Queens. A quick scan of the comments section proved that viewers were not buying what she was selling. Towards the end of 2019 and the end of her last pregnancy, Kiki began filming for her YouTube channel. The content wouldn't get posted until about a year later, but when it did, people loved it. The videos consistently feature her husband, their children, and their extended family. In November 2021, the Jasmine brand exclusively reported that Kiki had landed her own reality show. It'll focus on her comeback journey as she attempts to get back on top as an artist 
and overcome her bouts of self-sabotage. The series, tentatively called Kiki's Comeback, will feature many of her loved ones, including her children, husband, mother, manager, and best friend. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time! Oh,